What's up everyone, today we are painting the Orc Fatty from Zombicide Green Horde. The Orc Fatty uh, comes with 14, I believe, sculpts, uh, well, two sculpts, seven of each, so 14 models that you have to paint. Um, if you got kicks, the, if you got it from Kickstarter, then it has four more in there for a total of 18 of these guys that you have to get through. So there are quite a lot. So let's get down to the table and I'll show you how I did them. All right, so I started off with a white primer and then I have P3's worm green and flat green. And what I'm going to do is um, we're going to airbrush the fatties first. And so the big part, um, of what I was trying to do was try to figure out how to get a couple of different um, tones of green. So I broke them into two different groups. At the time I only had 14 because the uh, Kickstarter hoard box hadn't come in yet. So I only had 14 of them so I broke them into 7 and 7. Eventually you have 18 of them so you just do 9 and 9. Um, and then I did worm green pretty much pure worm green for the first one and then worm green with some of that flat green for the second one. Um, this is the only video that I'm really gonna show some full dry brushing. Uh, sorry, not dry brushing, airbrushing. Airbrushing is really hard to record when you don't have a permanent setup for it. So I'm trying to show you exactly how I did it and I think I'll just reference this video any other time that I do any airbrushing um, the fact is is that if you are n if you do not own an airbrush you can skip all of this you can skip this completely and just go straight into painting using the exact same colors or your own colors if you want to so I've already primed the exact same way uh, I prime every single other model that I do that I've done um, this one with a flat white uh, Krylon matte primer and then um, what what I did here is I added a little bit of water to it. I added some Vallejo airbrush thinner to the paint because the paint is not meant for an airbrush. And then you saw I painted it on the cardboard box that I use as my my um, my little studio here for when I when I uh, airbrush to make sure that it has like a vent in it and everything like that, so it goes out the window and doesn't just stay in my apartment. Um, I brush it and it's about the consistency of non-fat milk so very very thin and then you just go through and do small bursts and move the airbrush a lot and get a uh, full coverage it is going to take more than one coat it's exact same as if you're painting um, it's just faster in that you can get more of them done quicker um, but in terms of coats, yeah, you're going to have to do multiple coats. And it does take a little bit for them to dry. So this is after one coat. You can s still see a ton of white showing through the um, through the fatties uh, green. Now I've taken the worm green. I've put that in there. And now I'm adding some of this flat green. So uh, it's hard to tell what kind of measure. I just went for like a color that was a little bit darker. Uh, we're going to be using a wash later that will darken them up a lot So I wasn't too worried in making sure that the color was any sort of specific color because it was going to change pretty dramatically anyway So same thing you want to add water you want to add a little bit of primer to this as well You have to make sure that it's thinned and so uh, you can just mix it straight in the pot and then brush it on to the the surface that you're working on to make sure that it's the right consistency if you're using an airbrush. If you're not using an airbrush, just paint it on your miniature. Easy enough. So here it is after a single coat of the of the uh, dark greener, well the dark greener, the darker green mixture of flat green and worm green. And of course you'll want to do a second coat of that and now after a second coat you can see it's much more consistent way less blotchy you have to like not look at his clothing just look at their skin and you can see him there with uh, his second coat of just pure worm green and then there's the difference between the two and I think I show it at my painting 
my painting desk is here yeah here you go so at the painting desk you can see it's a uh, very consistent and smooth over both of them and then from this point on I'm pretty much just going to show just one model that I'm working on here's three separate colors that I used for the clothes flat blue flat red and flat brown now I'm not mixing these together so this isn't a I'm not showing you these colors and you put them on your palette and mix them all together um, for all of the orcs um, whether they be the runners walkers or like in this case the fatties I took the pile of miniatures and so in this case I had seven dark and seven light then I broke it into um, three three and two three three and two and each group did got brown so six of them got brown six of them got red and four of them got blue and then I'm just going through and painting all of his um, sash in brown then he also has like a leather um, like a leather cap on his head um, I've seen in some photos people made that cap metal that's okay too um, I chose to do him leather and with the leather cap on his head you would paint that brown on all of the miniatures if you were chose to do leather because um, he's has a brown sash I just did it all at the same time and so I'm doing all six of the miniatures that are getting brown all at the same time and then picked up the red and did all six of the red and then four of the blue. Then I came back with um, Citadel's, uh, what color is that? Mechanicus Standard Gray. Had to grab it out of my paint drawer here. Mechanicus Standard Gray and I'm putting that on all of the metal pieces. There are a lot of metal pieces. This miniature, you know, is, 35 millimeter scale the same as every other miniature um, that's in the in the um, Wow, I'm having a real Problem talking today every other miniature that is in a uh, zombie side They're all 35 millimeter scale, but he is so chunky and he has so much detail on him that it takes forever to get through all of this so the Mechanicus standard gray I did on all 14 of the minis um, and then now I moved over to Vallejo model colors buff and now I'm doing this on all 14 of the minis and that is his wrap So he has the wraps on his wrists. He has the wraps on his feet and then he also has uh, two little strings that you can see holding up um, some of his uh, Some of his metal plates behind his legs. So I got those as well and Then I switched over to army painters uh, brain Ma brain matter beige this is an off-white color. Ivory works as well, and I made sure to coat these skulls. Uh, there's some skulls on the right hip and the left hip. They're in different places on both of the models, but mo both models have skulls on the left hip and the right hip. Now, I'm putting a little bit of the Brain Matter Beige uh, just on the fingertips to make him look like he has sort of, you know, claws. Um, and then also getting his teeth now. I think in here for a while I only had the bottom row of his teeth done. He does have a top row of like uh, Fangs that are hanging out there as well that you want to hit. Yeah, I didn't do it right here But um, if you're doing it in the same order that I am hit the top teeth as well. There's no reason not to So now we're moving on to army painters quick shade strong tone and this comes in a little tiny packs but then you can also get these big giant packs and the way that I like to do it is take a paper towel put a little piece of tin foil aluminum foil in the middle of there and then set that down so then from here you just want to take a brush that you really don't care about uh, because this stuff is oil based and is really hard to clean off and when you use the paint thinner to clean it off, it sort of destroys the bristles. So do not use one of your good brushes with this stuff. But you want to paint this on really, really well. It took me um, sometimes, well, it depends on how much the the brush grabbed. It would be between three and four um, brush loads on there. Sometimes it would grab a lot and I'd get three. Sometimes I'd have to dip one extra one. And then what you want to do is rinse off your brush do not rinse it off in the paint thinner yet that is to clean your brush um, 
if you're using paint thinner to clean it you could have brushes that you know you bought for 25 cents that you just throw away that's fine but what you want to really do is you can get some of the excess off with water um, it'll take whatever's just sort of floating on the brush off and then you can dab the brush in the on the paper towel to get rid of it and then what you're going to do is start by brushing from the head down to the feet and doing that over and over and over again then you'll come back and dab any of the places that have pooled bigger than you want it to so what's going to happen a lot is around the feet it's just going to keep pooling and pooling and pooling you're going to do that right away so only do about three to five miniatures at a time and then hurry up and do that then let it sit for about 10 minutes and do it again that is the miniature after he was able to dry overnight you need to let them go at least 24 hours then I use my Krylon clear coat this is a flat spray and now you can see all of that shininess has been taken away and he's pretty much perfectly low lighted and highlighted just as he is you really can stop right here put them on the table they're already coated if you want you can throw a color on the base but otherwise these guys are perfect so here is Vallejo Model Colors Buff. If you want to make him a little bit higher quality, um, you're going to grab your dry brush and follow along with me here. And this, we're gonna take them closer to what we do with the heroes. So making them just a little bit better. In all um, honesty here, I stopped with all of them at this spot. I just painted the bases black. Then I'm taking one up to a higher quality for this video, but there's no way I'm spending this much time on 18 models that just come on the on the field and off the field and on the field and off the field over and over and over again for no, and like they don't have any discernible um, pieces of them that you could even tell which one you're talking about. So why waste your time? But if you do want to make them look a little bit better, it's very easy. So I just dry brushed the buff over all the areas that we had painted buff. Then I went back and took the Army Painter's uh, Brain Matter Beige and I'm painting it on the tops of the skulls. So we're bringing back up the white on the tops of the skulls. Then I'm hitting the peaks of all of the teeth and I think this is where I remember to do the tops. I also got the eye color. Don't worry, I fixed that little bit where the white went a little bit too far there. but. I'm painting in the eyes there so that we can actually do something with them in a second. Now I'm taking some medium flesh, any sort of uh, peach or light pink tone is good to just do the tongue. They all have their mouths open, they have their tongue hanging out, so you definitely want to put some color on that if you're trying to make this model stand out. Now I'm taking the Mecha Color Steel. Any sort of non-silver metallic is fine here. And I'm dry brushing all of the metal pieces. And in this case, it's important to sort of do top down only. You don't really want to do um, all the sides because you're trying to get it to shine and glimmer in certain areas um, and not everywhere. Otherwise, we would have just painted it as a metallic. So in this case, because it's on the top of his shoulders, I did it from the middle to the front and then middle to the back. And then um, did it on all the other ones just top down. Now I took the Vat Orange uh, from Golden, which is a very bright fluid acrylic. Um, I Next time I probably would have made this a little bit paler. It came out too bright for his eyes. They stand out a little bit too much. Um, and then I based the entire thing with black. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time putting scenery on these guys. Um, if you want to, of course you can. I've done it with all my other miniatures, but there's just so many miniatures in this game that I didn't want to spend the time putting all that kind of stuff in. Now Citadel's technical paint, Blood for the Blood Gods. This is a great way to cover up any mistakes, but there are also some deep gashes that these uh, fatties have that are on their chest and their back. Um, the ones that seem to have it, um, this, this particular model that I'm holding seems to have the clearest scratches so they're really easy to paint. I just used a really thin brush and dove in there and got all of these scratches. And then I also put just, you know, a little bit on the fingertips, a little bit in the mouth. Um, and every single one I did a little differently and then if there was any areas that I messed up where 
you know the um the army painter wash was too thick or the colors just weren't right i just put a little bit extra on there and helped to cover it up but there you go I mean, I think that this guy is perfect for the standard of what we're trying to do in this case. You could come back and highlight the uh, cloak, you could, or the the toga, I guess, that he's wearing. You could um, do some more with the face mask. So you can see the other ones, at leaving them at where they are, they came out perfect. I think that that is great in the way that they are. You could add some blood to them still and make them a little bit better. But overall, you don't need to spend 100 hours trying to make these guys look great. But please do not forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more zombie side videos. Thank you so much for watching this one. Please check out all my other videos that I already have posted and I'll see you all next time.